Springfield's news and talk. In studio with Springfield Alderman Joe McMiniman, I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's news and talk. A short segment this segment. I think we're going to come back for another longer segment with the Springfield Alderman. Uh, He, of course, is termed out. He's been in office for three terms, uh, so he has a unique perspective to provide. Alderman, we've got new ward maps you guys are going to be voting on tomorrow and some last minute changes. Uh, you, uh, your ward's going to be impacted uh, quite drastically here. What do you think about these new maps? Well, Ward 7 gets chopped up, uh, and I, what I don't care for is that the aldermen are chopping it up instead of independent um, uh, that's um, regional planning commission. You know, they came up with their map based on without wearing a a, uh, a hat to prefer to prefer anybody. They just did what seemed logical and reasonable and created you know proportional population districts uh, f- without trying to change any any one ward uh, dramatically. Well, then um, some of the aldermen got in, into it. I think it's a bad idea for alder persons to write their own map. Um, I think in- incumbents already have a huge advantage. And so when the incumbents write their own map, you know, a challenger can't write their map because they're not elected. So I think um, it, politically it looks bad. It looks bad like people are self-serving and uh, doing for themselves instead of allowing the process to be more fair and independent. So at any rate, yeah, Ward uh, 7, a uh, big portion of it goes to Ward, to Aaron Conley, and um, lesser portion to uh, um, DeCenso. But as far as the, the elections coming up, the, the, the sequence is going to be that uh, candidates can start circulating their petitions roughly in September and October. They file them in uh, November. Um, if there's um, more than uh, um, more than uh, four candidates, then there'll be a primary in February. I guess four or more, I think, is the rule. Mm-hmm. Then there's a primary in February. Then the general election is early April. So that's the sequence. Now, Springfield, unlike a lot of municipalities, because we're still under a, a federal order, everyone's up at the same time. It's not staggered. So um, you'll have all 10 aldermen, the city clerk, city treasurer, and the mayor's uh, up for election at the one time. Can we just, can I go, just go around the, 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 sure. uh, the horseshoe? So in Ward 1, you've got uh, Redpath. He's got a massive, uh, f- he's got good name recognition, massive um, campaign, which he'll probably move over to his daughter running for, did we talk about that already? A little uh, bit, yeah, when we were discussing Misty Busher uh, announcing the city treasurer, announcing she's going to take on, um, at least try to take on the job. Uh, we'll see who else announces, but uh, uh, incumbent Jim Langfelder uh, could face Misty Busher in an election, but uh, uh, you're saying that uh, Chuck Redpath's daughter, uh, different last name, uh, is is the deputy treasurer in May, make a bid for, for the spot? That's correct. So Red Path is maybe we're getting a, an attempted start at the Red Path dynasty. I don't know. But so, uh, yeah, uh, Chuck's daughter w- is expected to run for city treasurer. We'll see who else might sur- you know surface for that role. That's going to be potentially an interesting competitive yeah. race. And then uh, you got uh, the, the clerk, uh, uh, Lesko. He's, he'll be going into his third term. We'll, uh, we'll see if he'll, he'll have any competition. I think he's well regarded and does well in the elections. But going around the circle, again, for Ward 1, you got Redpath. Big campaign finance. Uh, the uh, serial donors i have always given well to Chuck. In Ward 2, you've got a new alderman, um, uh, Sean Gregory. He's out there doing things. He had a unity run this past right. weekend, which I think um, was uh, well publicized. Well, it, it just created a positive um, atmosphere. Yeah, I he think. did that along with the uh, the Sangamon County State's Attorney Dan Wright. Yeah, and the super, uh, school superintendent was there, and some of her staff and others. In Ward Three, you've got an appointed alderman, uh, Roy Williams. He's very active. He's out there. He's looking at the maps very carefully, seeing what you know what areas he needs to concentrate on. I think he'll run strong. Well, he was also very critical of the the mapping process early on, wanting it to be as transparent as possible, so that he could know where he's going to be working within those boundaries. Uh, and uh, one thing I've uh, noticed from observing uh, the city council, um, uh, you know, I listen to it the next morning uh, for the council roundup each and every Wednesday. But uh, one thing I've noticed is that he's very vocal and he's not 
shy of raising issues. Very similar to how you've been uh, your your tenure so far, Alderman. Yeah, he he's he's been speaking up more often lately, and yeah, he was upset. I mean, he knew that uh, Bill Houlihan of the Democrats tried to redo the map after the independent, non-gerrymandered version came out from the Regional Planning Commission. He was aware of that, and that early attempt by Houlihan to change the map around affected uh, some of the east uh, side wards, and they didn't like it. And uh, Roy Williams and I had the same attitude. Just let's go, let's not tinker with the map. Let's just, it is, uh, you know, there's logic to any map the way you could potentially write it, but let's just go with what this independent group that was not nonpartisan, what they came up with. We should be doing that at the state level, at the, at the county level. You know, the Democrats do that at the state level. The local GOP did that at, with the county districts. Let, let's try to keep our city government uh, less partisan. So that he and I had that attitude. But ultimately, um, it didn't go that way. And I think you'd have to say that um, Hanauer, Donlin, DeCenso, Aaron, and Redpath, um, they kind of put together six votes, and maybe Lakeisha is part of that. So they're going to kind of dominate what's happened. But uh, there's more. I haven't gone around the whole entire. Well, what yet. about you? I mean, you've got you. You're not. You can't run again. Are you seeking somebody to kind of fill that spot? Are you going to endorse somebody? Do you see anybody on the horizon for Ward Seven? If I was a younger man, you know, I'd wait for the next cycle. You know, um, but I'm turning seventy in January. And by the way, you know, when my, you don't look anything older than forty-five. Well, yeah, that's the disguise. You feel it inside, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, when Mayor Houston said he'd be one term, yeah. you know, I seriously thought about, well, who's going to follow Mayor Houston? And, and Jim Langfeld and I would sit down together after some of the Houston uh, City Council meetings, and, and uh, he was ready to go. And uh, I knew that he's got a family name and so forth, and he knows government. I mean, he's been sitting there watching. He's very patient. So I'm not going to um, – uh, if he can do a – uh, an equally good job, you know, fine, you know, that's that's good. But as far as your question, no, I'm I'm ready to be out of the frying pan. But I'd like to stay involved and come on to shows like, you know, Greg Bishop and talk about things. Yeah. I think I do have some knowledge. But to do share. You, but do you know anybody on the horizon? Because uh, we've still got you know a, a, a little less than a year before the election. But is there anybody on the horizon that you see in Ward Seven that uh, you can you can support? Yeah, there are some f- very good uh, folks in Ward Seven. And um, I, I wouldn't want to reveal their names because that's something they, they want to do eventually. And, and I th- th- getting back to the map, I mean, there's going to be two open seats, Greg. Uh, Fulgenzi, Ward that's right. yep. 4, and McMiniman, Ward 7. Two open seats that um, hopefully will get a lot of competition for those two open seats. I think those seats are very important for Langfelder. Some of the other aldermen have always been thinking about running for mayor, whether it be Turner, Redpath, Donlin, Hanauer, potentially even. Um, so they haven't always been helpful to the mayor um, and, and some others as well. So I think the mayor needs some folks that are going to be uh, more cooperative with Mayor Langfelder in what could be his third term. Alderman Joe McMiniman with us in the studio for a conversation about the uh, the state of the city. Uh, coming back, I do want to talk more about the state of the city and uh, also uh, possible backup water supply with St. Chris Lake uh, and the conversation uh, continuing on uh, about uh, some million-dollar pumps uh, that the uh, utilities wanting to get. So we'll talk about that coming up here with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. All right, we're back live with Alderman Joe McMiniman in studio. Uh, Alderman, it's always good to have you on, and uh, there's plenty to talk about, so good to take a third segment with you. And let's now talk about uh, the... Uh, the state of the city and some of the uh, particular things you guys are going to continue discussing tomorrow with the Springfield City Council meeting uh, took some discussion last week, uh, but it dealt with a couple of pumps that uh, CWLP was looking to get, a total of $1 million. I think they said that was coming from the federal tax funds through ARPA. Um, but uh, talk about the, the, the St. Chris Lake's role in uh, Springfield's water future. Right. So, first of all, we've got these pumps on the south fork of the Sagamon River uh, where we put a dam. Um, and those pumps are about 70 years old now. Those, those pumps and the dam were put in in the 1950s when our lake just about went dry. At that time, our lake was fed by just one creek. And uh, what the, uh, the, the, the 
city utility people figured out was if we could pump water from the South Fork of the Sagamon River, uh, that watershed, that amount of water is four times the amount of water flow from the single creek that was feeding our Lake Springfield. And that's what's kept our lake full. We've, it's not, we, we don't have any problems uh, or haven't had any problems. And so, um, but those pumps are now uh, 70 years old. We got to replace them. Um, and when I saw the ordinance come to us, I saw that the, and I discussed it with our um, water division manager, Todd LaFountain, and, and he said that the pump capacity would be identical to what we put there 70 years ago. And um, that, that's the uh, second lake issue has always been um, on my mind, and I think it's one of my important no votes um, seven years ago. Uh, contrary to Mayor Langfeld, I thought we could get by without the massive amount of spending that would be needed for a second lake. And we're talking about probably in today's construction dollars, $200 million. We would go from the lowest water rates in the state to, you know, to, to some high water states. So I thought when you looked at the trends, our water use trends uh, at the residential level was flat to declining. Um, we don't have the industrial component any longer in Springfield. And then we were going to retire three of our f- four coal-fired plants, which, uses, which used up about 20% of the water. So um, I've always been thinking about, oh, how did we get by without having to build a second lake? Well, then what's happening, Lake Sancrist, which is uh, almost adjoining nearby to the South Fork of the Sagan R- River, it was built as a water cooling lake for the Kincaid power plant, which is about double the size of, of our power plant right now. They're going to retire that in the next three to four years. And they've got a, a dam, it's a spillover dam. And so then the question becomes well, does that mean we could? take water from Lake Sancris, move it down the Sagamon River, and uh, then pump it fr- into our Lake Springfield and get even more water into uh, Lake Springfield and obviate the need for second lake. So that's kind of what the discussion was about. Do we need, do we, do we just replace our existing pumps with the same uh, gallon capacity of pumpage, or do we even beef it up? And so that's the kind of conversation I wanted to uh, have, and we did have it in part, but I was surprised. I've always... Um, dug into this issue. I, th- I was friends with Tom Skelly, who was our water division manager for many years. He and I went to the same uh, high school. He was a couple of years behind me. And uh, in fact, uh, when he was at the U of I, he roomed with one of my brothers at the U of I over in Champaign-Urbana. So Tom Skelly, he gave me a tour seven years, uh, more like, uh, uh, gee, it would be 10 years ago, uh, of that uh, South Fork Dam and pumping station. I've always kind of thought about it. And uh, so I knew what I was kind of discussing last uh, week. In fact, I've got a friend who helps run the Kincaid plant, and he's been telling me, Joe, and he, this friend lives in Springfield. He's saying, get the Springfield officials talking with the owners of Kincaid and, 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 and learning about the ownership of that lake and the rights of that lake. DNR, uh, Department of Natural Resources, had a big say in, in that lake. And uh, so I've been encouraging the mayor to do so for about a year. And I, I hope we, we explore this um, further. But I was really upset that Hanauer spoke up um, sharply. Uh, I don't think he knows the issues as well as I've tried to know the issues. And then, uh, or maybe it was Redpath spoke up. And then Hanauer calls the question, why do you want to shut off discussion about something that important? I was very disappointed in both of them for not allowing intelligent discussion to take place about such an important issue for our city. Well, I think uh, Redpath was the one that said, hey, we, we pay these individuals a lot of money, a fortune. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think uh, Redpath also said that uh, we waste a million dollars a week uh, or something to that effect, uh, somewhat justified, just going ahead and, and approving these uh, million dollar pumps. Um, but uh, Alderman Joe McMiniman with us in studio. Uh, this is just one issue that you've delved deep into, another issue you've delved deep into that we don't have time for today, and I want to get to it sometime in the near future. Uh, and Pensions. maybe, maybe oh, oh, look at that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said the magic word, pensions, yeah. uh, which, uh, Alderman, you, uh, you've you been very adamant in, in highlighting this issue time and again about the increased unfunded liability the for police debt. and fire pensions. It's, it's, it's doubled in, during my time on the council, unfortunately. That's why I've been a no vote for 11 budgets, because we just haven't uh, taken care of the debt. Well, well, we'll talk about that in the future as well. I greatly appreciate you taking time. Three segments with Alderman Joe McMiniman here, everybody. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk again soon. Congratulations as well on uh, being a grandfather for the second time. It's great to be uh, in studios with Greg. I saw Jim Leach is back. Yep. He's back here. from vacation. He's, hello, Jim. He's across yep. the window. <laughs> good morning. Have a good day. Hey, everybody. you too. And uh, we'll talk with him soon. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY Springfield's News and Talk. It's 8.51 from Culver's West on Wabash. It's time to apply it.